apprehensions dropped since the historic high in the year 2000, the number of Border Patrol agents has increased. According to Customs and Border Protection, there were 9,200 agents working nationwide in 2000. Last year, there were more than 19,000. The president's visit to Texas led presidential candidate and former San Antonio Mayor Julian Castro to hold a rally of his own in the Alamo City. Castro countered President Trump's immigration views as well as those of fellow Democrats with his own proposals for the border and beyond. He says he's not afraid to put immigration front and center in his campaign. Castro spoke to our politics reporter Phil Prazen about his plan. We want to choose compassion, not cruelty, when it comes to immigrants. Uh, this president has tried to get us to believe that somehow uh, we can only have a border that's secure if we are cruel to little children and to their parents. Uh, I believe that we have a border that is more secure than it's ever been and that instead of choosing cruelty, we should choose compassion. Is the overall message that you're sending that we need to accept that there are going to be people that, that are going to come here and we need to stop trying to stop them? No, we need to always maintain a secure border. Uh, and we have a border that is secure right now. A lot of personnel down there. We have 654 miles of fencing. But what we don't need to do is to be cruel to children and to families. We can choose compassion. So um, I would get rid of that Muslim travel ban. I would not build the wall. Instead, I would invest those resources in making sure that our ports of entry are as secure as possible so we can catch drug trafficking and human trafficking. And I would strike up a stronger partnership with those Central American countries that people are coming from so that people can find safety and opportunity at home and not have to come to the United States. That's the smart, long-term way to handle this. When you rolled out your plan, um, people seemed to gravitate towards the decriminalization part of it, uh, including a, a Republican Congressman, uh, Dan Crenshaw, who would just say, Dems are the party of open borders, period. You're, in this campaign, you're going to get a lot of that. Uh, open borders is just a Republican talking point. Uh, we have a border that includes 654 miles of fencing, thousands of personnel, uh, we have laws uh, that deal with immigration. What I believe is that we can maintain a secure border and also be compassionate. When it comes to um, what the process would look like under your uh, immigration plan, um, you want to split up ICE. And so what would those other agencies be doing in helping people through the process? Well, I, we're still, of course, going to have immigration enforcement. We're always going to have enforcement. Uh, but that enforcement, uh, I believe, would be more effective if we put those enforcement activities into the Department of Justice mm -hmm. uh, and change the culture of ICE. And so, you know, kids would go to school, people would get jobs, and they'd have to just go to their court, dare, the court dates at the appointed time. Yeah, and you know, the fact is that in this country, from the late 1920s until about 2004, even though we had a law that uh, made it a crime to cross the border. We actually enforced that as a civil penalty, not a criminal one. Uh, many of these problems that we have today is because we've prosecuted these as criminal offenses. That's why you have family detention the way you do. That's why you have such a backlog in our system and mm -hmm. the part of this chaos that's been created at the border. So, of course, the diplomatic relationships and, and working on the corruption and, uh, and the violence and, and um, Central America, but what other things do, do those countries need that we can help with? Well, these countries, um, they lack safety, mm -hmm. so we can help ensure that these countries are safer. They also lack job opportunities, so we need to make sure in a mutually beneficial way, in a way that the United States benefits from as well, that uh, people in these countries can find more job opportunities so that they can stay in their home country instead of having to come over here. I can see a, a skeptical person saying this and say, I don't like paying tax taxes to my government, let alone another one. Do you think that that is going to be a big problem? I think we should do, we should uh, invest in foreign aid when there's going to be um, a mutual benefit. And the benefit that we're getting here is that this is going to help control the flow of people uh, through the southern border, and so the United States will benefit. Castro is also using this moment in the spotlight to fundraise. He is far short of his opponents, Bernie Sanders, Beto O'Rourke, and Kamala Harris, who have raised more than $10 million in the first quarter of this year. Castro has yet to release his numbers.